Minicamp is in the books for the Dallas Cowboys, and today's winners and losers video is presented by Aura, all-in-one digital safety for the whole family. Get your free trial going today at Aura.com slash chat sports. 14-day free trial. Cancel at any time. Minicamp was supposed to be three days for the Cowboys, and they canceled it. They went with one day of minicamp. Day two was a top golf excursion, and day three was canceled altogether with Mike McCarthy saying they had already installed the installation stuff, so they finished their actual goal since OTAs and minicamp. Not that much different anymore. So are you okay with canceling the remainder of minicamp ending on one day? Y for yes or N for no? For the record, by the way, this isn't that unique. A lot of teams, as we get more and more into, you're not able to do the things you used to do at OTAs and minicamp, they cancel a day or two. The Eagles canceled their entire minicamp. New England canceled uh, their last day and the last two days of OTAs. So it is a bit more unusual to skip two days of the three, but it's not totally unique in the end. Let's break down some winners. First up, Sam Williams, the rookie edge out of Ole Miss. In the lone minicamp practice, highly productive. Four sacks. Uh, two of them came against Matt Woletsko, one on Terrence Steele, one on Tyra Smith. And I do want to make this note, too, just early on. These aren't real practices. You might have the Guardian caps on, which are now mandated by the NFL, the weird looking like almost like a volleyball on top of your helmet type of thing. Those are on, shells are on, but pads and real contact aren't quite the same. It's not a real practice, and it definitely favors space players. So edge rushers over offensive linemen, and your receivers and running backs over linebackers and corners because you're, you're just not tackling in the end. Despite that, it is okay to be excited over early big plays from guys like Sam Williams. So if you are excited about the Cowboys rookies, show it by liking the video right now. Next up, Jalen Tolbert as a minicamp winner. He missed. He was actually a loser for OTs. He wasn't really out there. He was banged up. Well, he came back from minicamp after a hamstring strain, and with other injuries that we'll get into later on at wide receiver, he was kind of receiver one for Dallas. He had a strong day, touchdown pass catch from Dak Prescott, and was the leader among the punt returners. And it seems like he is the favorite to handle that particular role as well. So Tolbert goes from... OTA loser because of injury to minicamp winner as he looked pretty damn good out there. This is the rookie I'm most excited about in 2022. Well, I asked the nice side of things here. Name a minicamp winner for me in the comments section. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, head down there and let me know who you think is a minicamp winner for the Dallas Cowboys. Connor McGovern next up here as he continues to work over Tyler Smith as the starter with the ones at left guard. Now, it is only June, and I would bet that changes at some point in July or actually probably more like August since mini, or training camp starts late July. But McGovern, for now, is the starter for the offensive line at left guard. That's a big deal for McGovern as he is in a contract year and fighting to prove that he is still worthy of being the guy the Cowboys thought he was going to be coming out of Penn State. Hasn't happened so far. It's a make-or-break year. I do still think at some point that Tyler Smith emerges as the starting left guard, but McGovern's job is to make that challenging. So what do you think ends up happening? Will Connor McGovern start week one? Type in S for he's a starter or type in B for he's a backup. More receivers here. That's not a huge surprise since there were so many injuries. TJ Vasher, who also drew some strong praise at OTAs, he is getting reps with the ones and the twos because of injuries and making some nice plays. And Vasher brings something this team doesn't have, which is legitimate size on the outside. Now, he has to play more physical relative to the way he did Texas Tech because he wasn't a physical player at a rather skinny weight for his immense size. But that is a unique skill set the Cowboys don't have right now on this roster. So Vasher might be the pet cat, so to speak, at, at training camp, but he's starting things off on the right foot. 
Today's show is powered by Aura. If you want financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, and online and device security for you and or your entire family, Aura is the spot for you. And they're giving you a free 14-day trial over at Aura.com slash chat sports. That link will be in both the comment section and it will be in the description of today's video. You can cancel this free trial at any time. So there's really no reason why you shouldn't get started. Aura.com slash chat sports. Another receiver, Simifeoko, the fifth round rookie last year who made no impact on the team out of Stanford. It's interesting to talk about both Basher and Feoko because they've got a little bit bigger size. Both of them, in the end, the key to their roster status is going to come down to how they impress on special teams. That is a big deal for those back end of the wide receiver room players. They've got to emerge as key special teams. That's how Noah Brown has stuck around for so long. And Fajoko, if he can do special teams, can replace Noah Brown and then get more reps like Brown got in games that mattered last year. So of the two young guys, the two bigger guys, quote-unquote, although Fajoko's not as big as Vasher, but you get the point, pick one of them. If only one of these guys can make the roster, who will, will or who do you want it to be? TJ for TJ Vasher, SF for Simi Fajoko. Time for some lesser names on here. Tyler Coyle, the safety. We have talked about Marquise Bell before. I am hyped about him. Don't forget about the other safety who kind of fits that J. Ron Curse mold as your bigger body linebacker safety hybrid. He's been making some splash plays at minicamp, some at OTAs as well. Overall, this is the best I felt about the Cowboys safety room for as long as I can remember. You've got J. Ron Curse and Malik Hooker re-signed, proven vets now. We all thought Donovan Wilson would be safety one last year. Now he's safety three. You've got Israel Mukwamu, Marquise Bell, Tyler Coyle, and Wanye Thomas. That's a lot better, even for like the back end of the roster guys than what the Cowboys have had in recent years. So I am excited about that standpoint. Now, minicamp's over. The Cowboys have nothing of note going on until training camp in July. But not only will we have the best training camp coverage you could need, we'll have daily videos despite that, even before training camp. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe at youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. Isaac Taylor Stewart next up here, the rookie UDFA out of USC, had himself the play of the day at minicamp. This is not the first time I have said there's been a pick six in two-minute drills. Marquise Bell had one. Taylor Stewart picked one off of Will Greer. We will talk about the back of quarterbacks later on, by the way. But Taylor Stewart flashed early. I think he has a tough path to the active roster with so many corners, but practice squad could be a prime destination for that young safety. Taylor Stewart is one of the more notable UDFAs this year. My answer is still Marquise Bell slash kicker Jonathan Garibay, which I was almost anti-brand, but whatever. Who is your favorite undrafted free agent this year? We've got one more name who you might not have heard of before coming up momentarily, but let me know who your favorite undrafted free agent is, at least for this year's class only, not 2020 or 2021, only for the 2022 class. Here's a name we haven't discussed at all, really. Dennis Houston, Todd Archer, hyped him up, and Archer don't miss. Getting reps with the ones, that means over other receivers, like Brandon Smith from last year's class, Ty Freifogel, who many of us liked coming out of Indiana. Houston has been getting some reps with the ones and has made a good impression, according to Archer. That is a good name to monitor. That back end of the roster spot, assuming CeeDee Lamb, Tolbert, Washington all make the team, Gallup's probably not going to be good to go week one. So that's three of your six-ish guys. That leaves Fehoko, Brown, Vasher, Smith, Ontario Drummond, Ty Freifogel, Roberson, and Houston all fighting for a couple of spots. That battle under the radar is a good one to keep an eye out for his training camp and the preseason moves along. Next minicamp winner is Dak Prescott, who apparently looks significantly leaner. Hasn't He said his weight hasn't changed, but he did show what he called some of the baby fat, which a little weird. It is best shape of life season after all, but he is healthy, and he's moving around better like we kind of saw at the end of last year. 
he wasn't moving that great early on, and then back a couple games seemed to add a little half step of speed. The Cowboys need him to dominate because the roster around him did not get better this year. That puts a lot of pressure on your franchise QB. Our last winner, best shape of life season. I've got eight different players slash coaches who have been hyped as best shape of life. Zeke Elliott, as he is every year. Connor McGovern, praised by Mike McCarthy for his in-shapeness. CeeDee Lamb added 10 pounds, and he grew a half inch. That's right, folks. mid 20 CeeDee Lamb grew a half inch. Mike McCarthy, not kidding, actually does look like he cut some weight, by the way. Dak Prescott, just mentioned him. Neville Gallimore, he added 16 pounds of pure muscle. Dalton Schultz per Mike McCarthy, best shape of his life. He looks great. Chauncey Golston added 20 pounds of mass this offseason. Welcome to best shape of life season, which is my favorite part of the offseason. Because no matter what, whether you are actually in the best shape of your life or if you're not and you added a little bit of the COVID weight still, you're in the best shape of your life. It's a great positive reinforcement campaign. So if you are in the best shape of your life, or if you're not, pretend that you are. Type me in the comment section right now. Minicamp losers time, because in life there are losers. Accept it and deal with it. First up is Kelvin Joseph, because, well, he's banged up again. Minor injury per head coach Mike McCarthy is expected back for training camp. That is a good thing, but it's just another roadblock and what have already been too many of them for Joseph in his young NFL career so far. Hopefully he is good to go in time for training camp. Josh Ball is next up here, and you won't often see media reports body players too much, but every time... There is a, oh, so-and-so bullied a lineman and he fell backward. It's Josh Ball's name in the tweet, which that, that's a, when you're looking for consistent little trends, I've noticed that one with Josh Ball. He's also working at right tackle, which makes it a trickier path for him to actually get on the field since left tackle is where we assume there would be an injury problem this upcoming year. James Washington, tiny apparently today, uh, receiver, because he's banged up. He's injured. That's what's going on right now. He has a left foot tendonitis, which it's a red flag for me if you sign with a team and then you're banged up and can't work at minicamp and OTAs. I know it's only install. It's not that important, but I want chemistry reps, and he's not getting those. And really overall, the receiving core is super injured. Noah Brown's banged up right now. You can call him a loser. CeeDee Lamb has a very minor issue that – uh, the term was, if it was a normal game, he'd be practicing, so I'm not worried there. But Washington Brown, the bang, being banged up, I don't love it. Time now to be mean. Name a minicamp loser for the Dallas Cowboys. Let me know who you are unimpressed by so far in the comments section. Rico Dowdle next up here, as he's also banged up and injured. Uh, he had the hip surgery it last year, then an off-season knee scope. So in theory, he's going to be back in time for camp, but with him out, Emily Davis banged up, by the way. Means Aaron Champlin and Nick Ralston, kind of, sort of, have been working as the next available running backs, and uh, along with Jaquan Hardy. So a bit thin. Hopefully Dowd will impress us. I like him. He showed some flashes, but it's got to be healthy. Finally, the non-Cooper Rush backup QBs. There is a, a sizable gap between Cooper Rush's play and that of Ben DiNucci and Will Greer. To the extent that I continue to not trust Greer and Nucci Main, despite the memes associated with him, which are pretty funny, I you need Dak healthy, obviously. Beyond Rush, I don't trust these other QBs at this moment. 